Hello friends, <clears throat> one of my virtual students asked me to teach a few classes on of studies by Sir Francis Speak. So I am, I am always very happy to oblige to my oblige my virtual students because they are my support and my backbone you can say <laughs> in this effort. Sir Francis Bacon, you know, he was Lord Chancellor, he was stated uh, by Counts St. Albans, he was conferred knighthood and so we call him Sir Francis Bacon. First of the greatest of English essays and uh, this essay is his masterpiece. First published in 1597, later uh, first published in 10 essays. This was the first essay, this masterpiece. And then it was revised and published again in 1612. 1597-1612. And what you find is that all his essays, they are packed with uh, worldly wisdom. Worldly wisdom. Proverbial. Pro pro they are like proverbs. Like we said, no? A haste makes waste. No pain, no gain. So, this, we, therefore we say, his style is aphoristic, aphoristic, aphorism, from aphorism we have got aphoristic. So, aphorism or aphorist, aphoristic style means short sentences, packed with meaning pithy, we say, terse, epigram, like epigram, see, as already I told you, see the first, first sentence in that essay. Studies serve for delight, for ornament and for ability. Studies serve for delight, for ornament, delight, uh, studies serve for delight, for ornament and ability. Now you can, this is just like a problem. You can go on expanding it. So that's why it's called a first. So his style is a first. That's a very important point to know. This is his masterpiece. Of studies is his masterpiece. Now, uh, you find uh, many, uh, this essay, you can, you can, one more aphorism I will give you. See, reading make it the full man, conference the ready man, and writing an excitement. Or you have got the Latin saying, abeum studia in morus. Abeum means pass, pass into. Pass into studia studies into. Morus. Morus means character. You say abeyum, etc. because Latin is a phonetic language. Phonetic language means you write, read and write in the write and read in the same way. That is abeyum, studia in morus. That means studies pass into character. If you read Mahatma Gandhi, you will become a non-violent person. Ahimsa. Isn't it? If you read Indian philosophy, you will become uh, you will become like a sannyasi or a guru, right? Yes. Or if you uh, read belligerent people, fighters, fighting people uh, like Napoleon, Mussolini, and so on, then you will become uh, you will also become like that after some time. So that is what is meant by then. That is an aphorism. That's what I mean. That's an aphorism. Aphoristic state. And now about this, I have already told you, first of the 10 published in 1597, point 0.1, point 0.2, that's his masterpiece, point 0.3, uh, Francis Bacon was uh, the greatest of English essays, the first English essays to be the first English essays, who is the ordinator of essay form? The French man Monday is the originator of essay. But he was not as stress as this. His style was comparatively prolix. Prolix means elaborate. Prolix. Opposite of aphoristic, aphoristic is prolix. Means elaborate state. Explaining and things like that. Giving examples and so on. So here it is very compact, as I told you. Compact this like that. Now in this essay. You will, there are 19 sentences and there are 10 points. 
<laughs> you can see the 19 sentences within that he has packed 10 very important points and all about studies. Studies means reading, studies also means reading, means uh, conferencing, means meeting people and talking and writing. So all about studies he, is, he has given in just 19 sentences. Now today we will go through the, the this plan of this essay and then afterwards we will take you one by one, sentence by sentence because there are 19 sentences. Every sentence is to be explained. That we will do later for the time being. We will have a survey of it. Right. So point one, point one is benefit and advantages of study. Benefits, benefits and advantages of study. Advantages of study. And second is, see, although this is very useful, Sometimes what happens is, we misuse many useful things. See, eating apple is good. Suppose you eat 100 apples a day, what will happen? Like that. Wrong use of study. That's the second point. Wrong use of... Wrong use of study. Studies. Studies reading. Reading the Wrong use of studies. The next is that some people, you know, they are bookish. When in a, some there are some people, eh? so some I I one day I went to a doctor, <laughs> then tell you, I tell you, and when I said, what is your complaint? I told my complaint. Then immediately he is opening a book and uh, turning the pages to find out the name of my complaint and his uh, the treatment the treatment protocol. See that means he is so bookish. Understand that he says that should not be done. So, what is required is you have to complement what you read, theory, with your experience. That's the thing. Complement your theory with your experience. So, the importance of experience in life. So, that is the importance of, of experience in life. So, reading is very important, studying is important, theory is very important, principles are important, but you should complement it with your experience. For example, teachers, be it, and so on, they pass. Go to a class. The class situation and the book situation, both are different. Understand? So, so what is written in the book? Education psychology. Okay. According to education psychology, I should look uh, at everybody's face like this. And that is not what is meant. So, you should use your sir, common sense, your experience. Understand? And the fourth point is attitude of different people towards study. Attitude of different people. Now, some people, you know, the cunning crafty men condemn studies. Crafty men. Now, they read, we will further, we will explain it further, but I'm just connecting these points. Suppose you, you know, suppose you read like this. Life is a tale told by an idiot full of sound and very secret way. Crafty man, who said all this nonsense? Who said? I am enjoying my life. It is not real, I told you, stay to old by deal. So this is just for the sake of he may be having a truck lot of problems with him, but he is he will say like that. The crafty man. Very shrewd people, they will not, they refuse to agree. They refuse to accept even the fact which are which are like him, they like. Just the for the sake of opposing, for the sake of criticizing, they do that. So, because there are people who have got the irritation in their brain. <laughs> they are intellectual irritants, so to say. So, they will be doing like this. So, the attitude of doing this. Then he said, the, uh, well, why, you see, attitude, then he said the, the, good, the good points of reading, and not to confute, and etc. So, what should be your attitude? The hmm? uh, attitude of different people. How should you be? How should you? How should you uh, look at reading? Look at reading. That is now different use of uh, the 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 good points we can say, not to confute and so on. That is we will see that later. And the sixth is use your discretion. He says. Use your discretion. 
to receive a discretion. Understand? Or your your common sense. Uh, what to read, how to read, and all those. So, and the seventh is reading with the full man, conference a ready man, and the writing an exact man. So that is the full course you can see. The full course. So different aspects of reading, how they help you. So reading means a full man, full, then uh, conference a ready man, ready man, writing an exact man. Very famous sentence, writing full, ready and exact. And if you read, study, then proper use of study, you will become full, you will become ready and you will become exact. These things further we will explain, okay? Then is the impact of different subjects on you. That is the next one, eight. History is made, yes, Impact. Impact of different subjects, different topics. Impact. Histories. What do histories do? As we know, history repeats itself. So you can see the, the mistakes committed by those people and so on. And then you can change according to that, how impact of this. So, so. Then you have got a nine is a Latin, a Latin statement. Just now we said obey you the so the total how each person is affected by studies. That is abeyum studia in morals. That is abeyum studia etc. Studies pass into character or nature. Nature or character. That is the next word. Very more see three words. Abey on the studio in Mars. And the and the tenth is the curative or therapeutic use of study. It's just ailments of the body can be cured by exercise. Suppose you have got the umbrella stomach, then what you do <laughs> what you do is you uh meru dandasana. There is an asana called meru dandasana. See? Or Every day you go for a walk for 6 miles, 10 miles, 10 kilometers, 15 kilometers, like that. Regular, your tummy will be reduced. So, like that. Uh, you have got studies, any problem? Yeah. Uh, here, for example, you have got, you, you cannot concentrate on anything. That's a problem. Play chess, and definitely you will call, start concentrating. Or, if you cannot concentrate, your attention is always wandering, then you have got a physical exercise to do. Close your eyes and then breathe, deep breath. So 15, 20 minutes, sure answer. Or suppose you have got a problem like this. I will again come back to these things. Say your brain is becoming what is called sleepy. After some 15 minutes, some days people will sleep. That's too late. Simple exercise. <laughs> so that's your problem. Like it will directly refresh your brain. Very simple exercise, we can do it uh, like that. So you have got a curative power of studies, that's the tenth point. Curative, curative, correction, correction, rectifying, therapy, therapy. So that is. So see this, everything is here. Right? All studies, what will happen? Benefits of, advantages, wrong use of studies, importance of experience, not only book, but experience, attitude of different people to a study. You have got the cunning people and so on, how they are, look at studies and uh, how schools, how how should you look at yes. then uh, studies, use your discretion, full, ready, ex exact, reading makes full, conference ready, writing exact, impact of different topics on you. The topics or subject, awareness to the end, a total effect of that is uncorrective or therapeutic use. So there are 10 points and 19, 10 points and 19 sentences. Today, uh, if you permit, we will do only the first part of it. First point, and then the first point is uh, benefit and advantages of service.
So first sentence one opens, the essay opens like this. Studies uh, for delight, for ornament and for ability. Uh, let us write down the board so it becomes easy for you also. Studies serve for delight. Delight for ornament and for and ability. So this is the first step. Every day I, you know, I, I think I need not write sentences like this on the board. You can have got the test book. I think next week I will be doing this till uh, we finish. So next time when you listen to my lecture, if you are lecturing, please take the test also with you so that it becomes easy for you. So the first sentence, you will do just only the first sentence. Study serve for delight for serve. Serve here means help. Why do you call a servant servant? Because he helps you. Now these days you cannot call servant servant, you have to say assistant. Working, somebody working at home in the kitchen, you will say kitchen manager, not kitchen servant or maid servant. If you call like that, then she will file a suit against you. So she is kitchen manager. <laughs> so like this, the studies serve. Serve means help. It helps you to become happy, delight. Study serve. Say suppose. Suppose you read a good novel. See, you are if you are interested in detective novels, and when you read that, it gives you pleasure. Study serve for delight, isn't it? Or you are interested in poetry reading or poetry recitation, as I have done. See, 434 lines of T.S. Eliot's poem, The Wasteland, I have recited and I have posted in YouTube. If you want, you can go. I was so much interested in that, you know. April is the coolest month reading late except of the dead land mixing memory and this year, etc. I even now remember that. I did it in 2017. February 2017. And now uh, I learned the whole thing by heart because I was so delighted. The lines, the structure, the thought process, the progress and things like that. So I so delight. It gives delight, it gives pleasure. If you are a, if you are interested in philosophy, when you read philosophy, say Heidegger, Edmund Husserl, I will give big names, Julia Kristeva. <laughs> Julia Kristeva is a feminist. Yes, if you are interested in feminism, then you can read, it gives you pleasure. Politics, you can read Machiavelli. So it gives pleasure. So studies serve for the like means it gives pleasure to you. Understand? For ornament, uh, what is the ornament there means? Ornament means it is it is an additional, um, but uh, additional, uh, it gives you additional ability, you can say. Or it makes you shine, shining, you said. <laughs> you can shine in groups. Suppose you are giving a speech, then you say, oh, human beings make plenty of um, uh, well, well, mistakes, they commit. Uh, sins, they are uh, wrong things they do, but God in his heavens, he sees everything. Like Browning says, no, if God is in his heaven, everything is well with the world. So when I am supporting my, what I am saying with a quotation, then what will happen? It is an ornament for me. Understand? This is an additional point of shining. If I say that um, people are like this, or I said, uh, but God in his heavens sees everything, he will forgive. And then I quote, what is that? To earn his human, to forgive is divine. That's an ornament. When do you put an ornament? Why do you put an ornament? A bride puts on or ornaments to enhance her personality, to make her beautiful, more beautiful. Exactly. The, the lady, the bride's name may be lovely. To make her more lovely, she puts on ornaments. <laughs> Understand? So you may be a learned person. You may be able to speak, uh, say like we think of hours in the UN Assembly. But suppose you are sprinkling your speech with quotations from great authors, like for example, Lord Acton says, absolute power, 
power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely like that. If you are making a speech, that is an ornament. It enhances your ability. Oh, people think, oh, he is a man, voracious reader, widely read, tremendous knowledge. Just speak to him five minutes, you get all the encyclopedia in front of you. He will bring all the encyclopedia in front of you. That is what do you call that? Ornament. Then the ability. So, if you read, a man of wide reading will have plenty of things to say in between. Understand? So, the ability, you know, definitely. What will happen yeah, when your mind is packed with the knowledge? You know the name, great names. See, just now I told you. Not. Or you say, a Sartre, Nietzsche, <laughs> big names like this. Then you will go, what an able person. He knows to how to um, drive home the points what he is making. Like that you think. You understand that? So your ability, even if you don't have ability, you can pretend that you are very able by quoting, by... But naturally you will become able. Imagine. See, when you are in UG, undergraduate class, when you are a man, postgraduate class, what is, how big, what a big gap is there? Your knowledge of your your knowledge level at UG level is very low comparatively when you think about your PG level. In UG level, undergraduate level, you learn and you study maybe for two, three essays, but in MA, PG level, you study the whole, almost 10 or 15 essays of answers by not one or two. So, what will happen is your ability will naturally, the barometer of your ability will definitely go up. So it's very clear. Studies serve for delight, for ornament, and for ability. Then, next sentence is connected to that. He says, reading. The, the second sentence is, their chief use. Their means studies. Their chief use for delight is in privateness. When do you enjoy? When you are alone. And retiring. See, just before bedtime, you can see some bed, bedroom lamp. Yeah, some people. Why? Because they read and then they enjoy, slowly close their eyes and then they sleep. Go to sleep. Throughout night, that enjoyment of reading will remain in their mind. So, enjoyment you cannot read and in a group and shout out, ah, I enjoy. No. That has to be private and in your retirement. Retirement means you are alone. Then you are alone. You cannot read and enjoy anything in a railway station. But many people do that. No. You read newspaper, you read magazines, you visit journals in a railway station. You can do that. But provided you have got that ability to concentrate. So reading, study, reading, may, sorry, we said that they their chief use for delay is privateness and retiring. For ornament is in discourse, speaking. You have everything you know about everything about Lord Acton, you know about Shakespeare, you know, you know such uh, such uh, wonderful quotes like everyone must everyone must escape, but that has it. See, or to be or not to be. You know all this. Her melodies are sweet, but those and her are sweet. You know. You are keeping it in your mind. You are enjoying. But how do people know you know? That is in discourse. When you talk, that is the thing. When you talk or when you write, that is also possible. Here discourse means interchange of ideas. Just now I told you, if some people said in this way, I told you the second sentence is the, uh, practically you can say it is a compliment or it uh, explains further the first sentence. Uh, reading, sorry, uh, their chief use for delight, studies are for delight. When do you, when do you enjoy reading in privateness and in retiring? Yes, when you are retired. Some people read after only their retirement. So, I mean, return from their job. So, they enjoy reading. So, that is also possible. Retiring. For ornament is in discourse. And for ability, in the judgment and disposition of business. That is your ability. See, if you know principles, 
then it's very easy you can apply the principles in, in your uh, daily situations we know all the fluctuations of market fluctuations then it's very easy for you to go to a shop and buy anything because you know what is happening in the market see you suppose you're an economist you know this then like that so in your, it's your ability in the judgment and disposition of business judgment of people suppose an, a criminal stands before me I don't know anything I will think he is a saint because I know I don't know anything about criminology about law criminal law and none of these things psychology and all those but and he stands in, in front of a police officer just looking at him he knows oh, what is what what what, is, what kind of a person is he why? Right? Because he has studied these things. Ability to judge. If I am a psychologist, again, I have got that ability to judge, read the mind of people. If I am a psychologist, I will be able to read the minds of each and every one of you. <laughs> that is the ability. Your ability will definitely increase and improve reading and reading. So think of the doctor. See? He, uh, after his degree, basic degree, he does not read anything at all. Then one one eleven, he will be educated by the sales medical representative, not uh, the book or the studies that he made. It has to depend on him. On the other hand, if you are up to date, you are uh, reading every day, then what will you are able to, You find a strange case immediately. You remember another case of Nipah virus. See that, that is a doctor, that he, he could, he diagnosed it. Probably he might not have read anything about, when he was studying, he might not have known anything about Nipah virus those days. But now his experience, his studies, updating, made him judge, ah, this is the terrible thing, lethal, so get ready. Immediately, what happened? News flashed, and people all were uh, ready to face any calamity or any situation. So, in judgment and disposition of business, some people will go to a doctor and oh, my uh, paining uh, whole body is going. Doctor will look at that person and say, oh, this is a psychosomatic disease. It's only mental. What do you do? He will do something and say, oh, take this for ten days and come back. He might have given some vitamin tablet. That's enough. He can dispose him of or her of. Because he is up to date. Understand? He is up to date. So, um, delight you derive by in private. Privateness and privateness and retiring. That is when you are alone. You cannot read in groups and then jail. Can you? You can recite, but you cannot group them. And then, Next one is uh, your discourse, ornament discourse, ability, judging, and also disposition of uh, cases, one after another. Many problems will come. If you are a very able principal, see, uh, you know the psychology of students, children, you know, then they come with problems, you say, oh, all right, I will see, I will manage, don't worry. Oh, I decided to see that. Otherwise, you will be baffled. So it will be a terrible situation for you. And so, ability in the judgment and disposition of business. See, we have heard many stories about doctors improvising cases which they have never might have seen or attended. But because of their background knowledge and the studies that they have made, they can easily judge what is this and then dispose the business, do this, or they can manage things. Understand? That's all. <clears throat> so, delight is in privateness and retiring. Ornament is when you speak. The ability is your judgment, your mental ability. That's it. And then he continues this point. For he says, expert men can execute and perhaps judge your particulars. See, there are some people, traditional medicine you have heard, no? traditional medicinal practitioners. They know, they are expert people, they have got experience. 
they can they may be able to uh, send three one one or two patients or traditional type of say fever for example you can think, you can tease but to distinguish between an a common fever and meningitis for that you require you will get deep study the traditional doctor will not do that he may be able to give you medicine for fever but to distinguish between this whether it is meningitis or chicken gunia or nipah virus etc you require studies that's the thing expert men can some people say i have been with that doctor for 15 years now i know i can manage that is experience we don't uh, uh, we don't say that it is an underestimate that no not at all but when a problem comes they will not be able to they will be they will stand bewildered what to do but a man who has got theoretical knowledge he will be able to, and practical knowledge together he will be able to he will dispose that disposition of business particular one by one but the general counsels and the plots means the plans and marshalling of affairs come best from those that are learned see a typist for example i was a typist for many years in in a firm if i tell you the name of the firm you will know it so i don't know what to say that. okay so what happens is I am getting drafts after drafts to type. I can type, but I cannot make a draft. Means a letter. Why? Because I don't have knowledge about how the factory works or the company works. I know only this. Something is given, I do it. But on the other hand, expert men, marshalling of affairs, dealing with the various aspects of a problem. That is marshalling of affairs can best be done only by people who are learned. Compare a traditional medical practitioner practicing traditional medicine and a person who is a super specialist, a super specialist, yes. somebody who is doing super specialist. See that? Then the learned person, of course, stands definitely in advantageous position. But not the other way. Other man is a traditional, uh, uh, traditional medicine is practicing. Okay, but what happens is that they just we just sometimes we say compounder later becomes doctor. That is expert is expert. He is not a learner person. There are people I know teaching grammar. <laughs> Don't misunderstand me. Uh, there is a, one person I know personally I know this. He has never gone to school, but he manages to teach English grammar. How? As part. He must have talked to many people, read many books and things like that, privately. But what about that man? Can you compare a person, a postgraduate student or a teacher who is teaching continuously English grammar? You cannot compare. The other man is a Other man will be able to do certain things, but not Theoretic. Marshalling of affairs come best from those that are learned. So, uh, for example, a simple, another example I tell you. Uh, you know how to play football. Okay. You are playing, you are kicking, you are not. But what about a coach? He gives the theory. See, he is a learned man. Uh, if, if you know, how to kick, how to catch the ball, what are the fouls and so on, you know, from your experience. But the other man is not like that. He's a learned man and he can handle things without any difficulty. So these three sentences about advantages or benefits of reading. So, this. so the two sentences that follow after the first one. Studies serve for delight, for government and for ability. And the next sentence is their chief use for delay is in privateness and repairing and the ornament is in discourse and then uh, 
judgment, sorry, ability is judgment and the disposition of business. Send it. And the third sentence says, uh, there is a judgment in this one. There is a, for expert men can execute and the judge of particulars. One or two aspects. But what about one by one? But general counsels and plots. What is to be done? See, the theoretical aspect towards marshalling of affairs, dealing with many affairs, various cases. For example, liver ailment. How many thousands of ailments are there? Now, a traditional practitioner of medicine, he will say that, oh, everything is jaundice. But we know, we have got appendicitis A, B, C, D, E, F, like that. That's the thing, disposition of business. See, those who are those who are practicing like this, no, that is traditional medicine and so on, they will say, they will give for anything a broad spectrum antibiotics. See, they can manage like that. But that is not the case with a learned doctor. He will give targeted medicine because he knows what is it. I think now you understood all those three sentences. All right? For expert men can execute and perhaps judge of particulars one by two. But, but the general counsels and plots, marshalling of affairs come best from those that are learned. So that three, those three sentences, one unit we can say. It explains, serves, study serves for delight, for ornament and for ability. When do you enjoy? When do you make it an ornament? When do you use it for your ability? Then it classifies two groups of people. Those people who are experts and those by experience. Those people who have learned things by experience and those people who have learned things academically. Or uh, their theories. I already told you about this. I can write I can type any number of notices, but I cannot, I cannot draft a notice. Why? I am only here. I can only say maybe same thing and I can go through the file and see previous file and see the same matter or same situation, I will be able to copy that. But a new situation, I will not be able to do that. I am speaking because I was once upon a time a typist. Okay, see you. Hope that you understood these three lines also in direction. Think of aphorism, that's very important. Whenever I think of Francis Bacon, first sentence you have to write is, his essays are aphoristic by C.U.K.